company. We are in uh, initial discussions with Tata Steel as well. All right. Uh, so a lot of j joint ventures there. Uh, so one of your pet projects has has been that uh, you wanted all the domestic players to pool in and actually build a war chest uh, to go and uh, get those coal mines acquisitions going. Uh, has there been any kind of um, work in progress on that? Do you think that this might uh, pan out in the next couple of months? You know, it was in the context that, you know, this mineral resources, especially coping coal resources, uh, are very expensive now, their valuations are high and if you are really looking for a large cooking coal resource then it doesn't come cheap and you know, uh, that was primarily the reason you know, government formed the you know, joint venture of five uh, PSUs, sale, NMDC, CIL, uh, RINL right. and uh, NTPC, so that you know, our resources could be pulled together. But then, uh, you know, all of them are not really looking for a coking coal. While all the steel producers here, they need coking coal and primarily from abroad. So, if we pool our resources together, then obviously we can go for bigger acquisitions. It was in this context and I have had general discussions uh, with the other steel producers about this idea and they are in agreement. Now, modalities will have to be worked out. I don't think so there is any concrete uh, thing which has emerged, but concept, conceptually it is uh, agreeable and acceptable to others. So you're hopeful maybe in the next couple of months you may I'm sure some... this concept can be taken further and you know, converted into some kind of a workable arrangement. Right. I'm going to ask you a little different question here. So uh, you've uh, been in the industry for so long. We've seen the Naxal men menace really, uh, you know, expand in these last couple of years. How do you think is this affecting business and, uh, you know, what kind of role do you see it playing further on? Most of your steel plants, of course, ha are under high security. But uh, how is this really affecting the steel business and sector in India? Well, yes, uh, many of our steel plants are in Naxal affected uh, zone and especially our mining resources, iron ore mines are in thick of uh, Naxal infested area. Now, in the past we have been impacted by way of some uh, disruptions now and then and more so on uh, bunds called by Naxals which uh, disrupt the loading and dispatch of iron ore. But we have not seen any significant uh, sabotage or disruption, although there have been few explosions in the past. Now, the only thing which is really helping us is that we have a large number of employees belonging to the interiors and peripheral areas of our steel plant. They come from villages from where, you know, all this nationalism is there in rampant. So there is a tremendous amount of goodwill for our plants in those areas by virtue of our employees having been looked after well and their families have really uh, progressed well. And secondly, well, we have a very good track record of good corporate citizen as good corporate citizen doing a lot of work in, uh, in and around our steel plants and peripheral areas like road building, education, health, uh, water supply and self-help training programs, etc. Right. And I can, we will continue to do that. Right. I cannot let you go without asking something on steel prices. Uh, you're also looking at cutting uh, flat uh, prices by about maybe 1,500 1, to 2,000 uh, a ton by 1st June. So where do you see the prices heading in the immediate future and if you can confirm that news for us as well? <laughs> One thing I can say that media makes a big issue out of you know any change in the steel prices. This is a natural phenomenon which happens in every commodity after prices are never constant in the you know, this kind of uh, decontrolled and uh, market-led uh, prices. So, in the past, uh, we have uh, increased the prices, we have decreased the prices. There is generally a system of monthly pricing for these steel uh, uh, products, apart from some uh, term contracts which every producer may have with the specific buyers. And uh, in the last uh, two, three months, we have increased the price on the strength of uh, strengthening of global steel prices. Now, last three, four weeks, global steel prices have weakened to the extent of eighty to hundred dollars. So obviously, that uh, calls for correction here. So, well, 
if we have increased the price in the past we can as well decrease right so in in uh, the immediate future where do you see both flat and long uh, steel products prices heading uh, initially like you said a couple of months ago we saw um, them uh, being increased and also there was a little bit of uh, concern in terms of whether there was a cartel being formed and things like that but uh, in the immediate future where do you see the prices heading do you see them stabilize or are we going to look at some more cuts no one thing i must clearly emphasize that market dynamics is such in the country that there is no question of formation of any cartel or manipulating the prices you know apart from uh, there being sufficient availability of steel within the country import is allowed under open general license by anyone and uh, with a minimal duty of 5% so question of any cartelization doesn't arise if the prices have gone up in the past that is on the strength of international steel prices going up and uh, that that will remain the phenomenon and i suppose our prices are especially for flat products are very much aligned with the global prices uh, so i will i am seeing that uh, long product prices have corrected quite a bit uh, since the peak of uh, recent peak of march uh, and uh, almost 5 to 6000 rupees a ton so it is a welcome relief for individual house builders construction industry and infrastructure industry and uh, there has been correction in the flat product prices as well in global markets that will get reflected in indian prices also i suppose already uh, some producers have uh, reduced the prices mid term this month even sale has corrected its prices mid term we brought it down by 1500 rupees a ton right. so we will remain aligned with the global market right. one of the things that hap- that has happened under your tenure and sale is that uh, the production cost has really come down uh, for the company uh, how do you see this uh, panning out in the next uh, ca- quarter or maybe an, even uh, the next two quarters so well, it is very key and vital for uh, uh, our company as well as other steel producers also because ultimately there is over capacity in the world and your competitive costs will determine your status in the industry and sale as far as sale is concerned we have advantages on certain score like you know we have 100% captive mines for iron ore so we start with an advantage there but we have disadvantage in from in terms of high manpower costs because historically we have been having large manpower all the over the years we have reduced in the last 10 years we have reduced our manpower by one third more than 35 percent while our production has gone up by about 50 percent so that has led to much higher productivity nevertheless uh, we have to offset this disadvantage in terms of Uh, higher manpower costs through other efficiency measures so cost will remain key for every steel producer and for sale as well it will be our effort to remain most cost competitive at least uh, uh, domestically and right now we are quite cost competitive even on international scale right uh, you